Hi everybody, my name is Kim Hill. This is my son, Cassius. Cassius Hill. Um, Happy New Year. Um, black folks will say Happy New Year's, but it's just one. We're gonna do one year at a time, Happy New Year. Uh, I've come to you today. I did not think my first post of 2021 was going to be about this, but I've been getting notifications all the day long about a post that is making some noise that Will I Am did with Wyclef. What up, Wyclef? Um, and I'll, I'll play it for you and then I want to talk about it a little bit. So, you know, I'm kind of old school, so this helmet's away. Is it this way, sir? And if you were Panasonic headphones or Sony headphones, you didn't know Beats was just going to come and take your lunch. Facts. And so, so in 2007, in 2004, Black Eyed Peas, we, you know, we were just trying to get on. You know, we're not like, when you think of, I'm a black dude, but when you think of Black Eyed Peas, we got so big that, and it hurts, it kind of hurt my, it still hurts a little bit, but like we're not considered a black group, because we got that big, and, 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 and when you think of Black Eyed Peas, you don't think of, it's no longer like urban or black culture, which is, which is, which is, uh, it's not good for the black community that Black Eyed Peas is not looked at as a, a, a black group because we've had international success and that should be, that should be credited to the black community or more so than letting it be adopted. But that, that's just a, a, a thing that we suffer from all the time. Like when you think of jazz, you no longer think of black anymore. When you think of rock and roll, you don't think of black anymore. Like that, all that, that just, I, I don't know why we have that. When you think of uh, even country, you don't think of black. Like a lot of the things that we create and we invent, we dispose of or it gets stolen from us to the point where there's no association to its origins. Um, so to answer your question, I... I okay. <laughs> Where do we start? So, my morning started. Um, I'm filming this on January 1st, 2021, 20, and my morning started honestly with tons of tings and pings um, between um, my email, between uh, Instagram, and tons of Twitter activity. And then it just got on the shade room. And, and so I'm like, you know what? Let me put on my Facts of Life pink blouse and pull my hair down, uh, you know, I have my little rat tooth comb, and, and let's do this. So, you know, this is the quarantine team, and I asked Cassius, as I often do, you know, do I have this right, you know? Um, because of course I read the comments, and then I went to the full video, which is why Clef and Will I Am, I guess I released this on YouTube. Um, and so I read the comments as well, and it's just, I have so much support, especially since I came forward with the New York Times piece in the, at the end of 2019. And I had a lot of support prior to that. And this is such a significant black girl moment that I feel like people keep snatching our edges in our wig. And they need to just let us have this moment, like finally, right? But just in case I'm being hypersensitive because the woman that people are talking about is me, Ask my son, so I want you to be candid, I want you to be brief, and when you saw that clip, what was your response? That's appropriate for a 10 year old when we're talking about adults. Go ahead. Uh, I was really just thinking, hip hop was, is, and still is one of the biggest black genres of music. It's hip hop, it's rock, it's when you think about that, you think of black people in the black community. When you sort of drift away from that and you're not doing hip hop anymore and you sort of go to pop and auto tune and robotic voices and that kind of stuff, you're not in those black roots anymore. So I don't understand how you're not even gonna talk about the black girl that you had in your group and you're gonna to skip to 2004 
and you're gonna say, I don't understand why the black community isn't embracing us. I just didn't understand that. So if you, yeah. I do you Do you feel you can be objective even if that black woman wasn't your mom? Like if you just saw that on the strength, and let me just give a little context. Because Cassius was going to a very private school that had a lot of celebrity parents, which I don't consider myself one, but, um, oh. I want to get some more. Oh, okay. Um, you know, Cash, I, I really never got into, thank you, what I, what I did. I'm Cassius's mom, and I pulled back from the industry for a myriad of reasons, but really specifically for motherhood. And um, so Cassius had no idea until the documentary came out what my role was and, and, and what my flip was in the Black Eyed Peas. So when he then, because of suggestions, started seeing everything from... Fergie's National Anthem to early work from the Black Eyed Peas once I left to now, he was like, he honestly kind of couldn't believe it was the same group. And so, so my question going back with that bit of information before I get into my take, what was, do you feel you can be objective even though I'm your mom and some of this has to do with me or if you saw the old Black Eyed Peas and the new Black Eyed Peas, and Will I Am made that statement about Black culture, do you feel that you would still be able to be objective? I would probably have the same response, even if you weren't my mother. Okay. It's just because no matter what, it's still the same circumstances. Any Black woman in a group, and they don't have any credit for the things that they did in the and the role that they had in the early versions of the Black Eyed Peas, which was the real hip hop, the part that Black people and the Black community did credit. And then when you started to drift away from the thing, the big genre that Black people were talking about and that Black people really had, once you start to drift, drift away from that, it's, you don't have those Black roots anymore. Okay, thank you. I know you want to go downstairs with your kickboxing stuff and yeah. All right. Thank you, Cassius. King Cassius is my son. She is too. <laughs> um, I'm out of the mouth of babes. So I, I wanted that perspective because even for a 10 year old, it to me is, is obvious that it's, it's, and, and it's a bit insulting that Okay, now I'll speak to you directly, Will. I love you, okay? I've made it plain, I've made it clear. And I have supported the peas post my departure, publicly and privately. I've reached out to all three of the guys over the years at all their big milestones and congratulated them. And that has come from a very pure place. And I can say that not really being a fan of the direction or the music at all okay um i joke with people and i say this with love like i was in the black eyed peas like it became the navy beans or like something else it wasn't it's not my band it's not what i was in and that's totally fine but will what i'm why i'm coming on camera today and addressing you is because for you to make that statement as if the onus is on the black community to celebrate you and the band when you didn't celebrate us. It's almost like there's this cultural smudging. And for the record, when my doc got on YouTube and it's at, I don't know, like 5.4 million views with like, I had to write it down, almost 19,000 comments. The majority of those comments that come from black women clearly say it feels like cultural smudging, like, yeah, I believe her and I think it's commendable, but y'all also didn't have her back. You didn't like go after her. And while I'm not gonna get into that here because I still stand firmly behind everything I said in my doc, it is, it is like when you can come behind that and say this after black women handed a new president to this country, we did that. We did that. And everybody from Eva Longoria, like 
still can't, and I understand she apologized, but it's like that same thing of like, you just, it's like it's, it, it almost hurts it to slip off your tongue that a black woman had a part in something really magnificent and I don't understand it. I was very confused when in this video, as did in read in the comments, you started in 2004 and so we were on the come up. When I joined the group in 1995, I was a part of two critically acclaimed albums that I helped produce, that I, well not produce, I, I co-wrote on, I performed all over the world with y'all, as did another black woman, Macy Gray. Like, how, do, how does that get left out of the conversation and you're sitting next to Wyclef, who was also there, and you started 2004, and then they flash to a picture of y'all with Fergie. I, like, to me, I've heard in certain spaces that when you've had the opportunity to say my name, you don't, but to actually see it, to actually start 2021 off and actually see that you just would not talk about the evolution of the Black Eyed Peas at a time when White, White Clef referenced it and I was there and you referenced the song he produced for the Black Eyed Peas that I, I produced the vocals for with, with two women, one of which has passed away. Like, it's mind blowing. And so it feels like kind of this cultural smudging or erasing of the imprint of a powerful black woman. And I'm here to say as that powerful black woman um, and you to say, you know, with all your money and your private jet and your beautiful home and your cars, well, you're gonna have more money and I'm okay saying this, you might have more money than I ever have in my lifetime but I have something that you can't buy. And this is what I was talking about in the doc where I said, I have my happy, you know, like I'm on my second home, the Lexus in the driveway is paid for. It ain't brand new, it wasn't brand new when I bought it, but I have what I need. But I always stayed rooted in my blackness. And I fought for that when I was on Interscope as a soloist and when I was in the Black Eyed Peas. And I constantly got pushed back. I constantly was like, it's not just a sexual thing, but being kind of pressured to like, you know, exotify Kim Hill. Like, it's not enough for me to be a black woman. Like, there's gotta be some Asian in there. There's gotta be some Indian in there. Like, it wasn't enough to be like, I use a rat tooth comb to push this down. Now it ain't a perm. And with a, some mousse and water, she lays on down. But my point is, you're saying this in a moment and it's no diss to Shakira. Oh my God, my Latina sisters, please understand me. You got a song where you're bigging up Latina women and not one of the women represented in the video was an Afro-Latina. Not one of them had nappy hair or was brown skin. So you want to have the same community that helped build you and was the foundation of you coming, us coming out of the native tongue movement to now hold you in the space we hold most deaf and De La and Tribe and Fife, may he rest in peace and, and, and Slum Village and these are all our people because we all toured with them and all these brothers hold me to this day to the highest regard. And I don't get it from you, not publicly. And you want that same community to validate you and you put a white girl in that place. And you've been in platforms on Oprah where you could have said, and by the way, we started somewhere different. And like you, Oprah, there was a black girl here. You had that opportunity and you didn't do it. And I kept quiet and I minded my black business and I put my head down, right? And I held my household together and I'm raising my son and I've done a kidney transplant and, and, so, and raising money for Next of Kim and so on and so on. But today, in the midst of the awakening and the turn of this crazy thing that's going on, is the day I'm going to say, like, I'm done. I'm done. And I thank every single person. And I'm going to name some of y'all. Sons of Baldwin, Shaka Bars, Black Wall Street, Black Culture News. The list goes on and on that have shared this story and have called me a queen. Thank you. That have celebrated me as a Black woman. Thank you. The sisters that I do this work for. Thank you. There's a black Puerto Rican, she goes by black Puerto Rican PhD. Her name is Rosa Clemente. And I wanna thank you, sis, because I just discovered you and saw you bring uh, Eva, uh, Men uh, what's it, oh Lord Jesus. Who, I just said it, um, cause she's just on the thing. Uh, I'm getting all confused. 
um, that, that made the comment on MSNBC about the real heroes here are Latino women, which is, y'all are heroes, but it didn't go down like that in the election. We can't recreate this narrative. And because she did that video where she talked about anti-blackness and how dangerous it is, then Eva reached out and said, I, I, I need to own this. How can I help? And we can hold space for you in that. But I'm sorry, all the people that support me and love me and know this work I'm doing around blackness and anti-blackness that blew me up today, people I don't know, I owe it to them because they're going into these DMs and they're going onto these comments and they're saying, no, she's our queen. This is Kim Hill. She's a medicine woman. She's doing this powerful work and she's doing it in a, she's a stately woman. And thank you for that. And she's doing it, you know, still showing y'all love. So I love you, Wyclef. I love that I saw you and Will on a platform as black men saying you love each other. I love that y'all said you're going to do this collaboration like a Fuji Peas kind of thing. And the female that you're going to bring in is an African woman. I hope you do that. I hope you do that. You know, because I'm just black enough for there to not be a thumb big enough to smudge me out of the story. And I've been fine with it. God has me covered. But so many of the young black women that love me and follow me, they don't have it like me. They don't have enough representation. They don't have a song where somebody's being like, I love black girls. Do you understand that? And at an important moment right now when black women keep holding y'all down, it's still the reindeer games. So I do this work because I've been called to do this work. I'm grateful to have the voice and the, 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 the peace of mind to do it. I'm grateful I never assigned agency of my body and my sexuality over to an industry that clearly could care less or couldn't care less about my black behind because my mama raised me to know better. I hope there's healing. I do, Eva Longoria. And Eva! You're in Sylvie's Love, which is a, an amazing film. It was in post-production when you probably made this statement. And I'm not trying to like reopen this stuff, but it's in a film with a black director and black writer and a lot of black producers. And you can say that. <laughs> we have to do better. We have to do better. I will stay pulled up for y'all. I will keep this rat tooth comb out and ladies edges down and I will speak my truth. And I'm not worried about protecting anybody anymore. Well, if y'all don't know that this is coming from love, then I don't know what to tell you. That's your where is the love right there. And on this New Year's Day, let me get my black eyed piece started because don't think for one second I don't make black eyed peas on New Year's Day. I love y'all. Thank you.